If you live in one of these states, you and your loved ones have medical rights if diagnosed with a terminal illness. Let's talk about what death with dignity is and the three criteria that a person must meet to qualify for it. Because you deserve to know your rights and the rights of those you love. What's up world, I'm Dr. Nick Spurlock, herbalist, acupuncturist, and end of life doula. I'm a doula because I want to have conversations about what a good death looks like. I want to know what my options are so I can better help myself and my loved ones have a meaningful end of life experience. So while these conversations can be difficult, the best time to buy a map is before you enter the woods. Death with dignity laws grant us the legal right to request medical aid in dying when a terminal disease is ending our life. That means a dying person can request a prescription for medicine that will bring about a peaceful death. While you don't have to use this option, death with dignity laws are still important because they give you the legal authority to decide which is more valuable to you, length of life or quality of life. Not everyone who is eligible will choose medical aid in dying. Those that do obtain the prescription may not use it. For some people, having the prescription gives them peace of mind even if they don't take it. 74% of Americans, with a majority across every demographic group, agree that we have the right to medical aid in dying. Because none of us deserve to suffer, or watch someone we love suffer, at the end of life. In order to qualify for the right to request medical aid in dying, you have to meet three criteria. The first is that you have a terminal diagnosis with less than six months life expectancy. This could be due to any number of illnesses, such as cancer, dementia, organ failure, or motor neuron disease. The second criterion is that you are determined to be mentally capable, as in you are able to make decisions on your own behalf. The final criterion is that you are able to administer the medicine by yourself without assistance. So, in summation, you have the right to a dignified death if you are already dying, but no one else can make the decision for you, and no one else can do it for you. If I'm dying from an uncontrollable illness that will likely strip away my autonomy or identity and cause me immeasurable suffering, death with dignity laws give me the right to a peaceful, painless death when I feel that my time has come. The disease has claimed my life. That remains the same. But I have the option to die at home, surrounded by love, while I'm still me. We all have the right to make the call when our time draws near. That call may be to let things run their course. That call may be to set sail before the storm hits. And we may not know which call to make until we understand our situation. No matter what you decide, you have the right to make that call for yourself based on your own circumstances, expected disease course, and your personal vision of what a good death looks like for you. We all have the right to a meaningful dying experience. Know the rights of the people you love. Today's question is, what smell would you like in the room when you are nearing the end of life? What scent would bring you peace and happiness during your dying experience? Lavender? Pine? Clean laundry? A favorite perfume? I encourage you to roll that question around in your head as a thought experiment. And if you feel like sharing, let us know in the comments. I'll tell you mine. For me, I'd like the room to smell like garden herbs. Bring rosemary, thyme, and sage when you come to visit me. And every now and then, waft in the scent of freshly baked cookies. And sit by my bedside, sharing stories, while eating those delicious little morsels. Herbs and cookies.